One of the great Italian traits that I'm proud to possess is the gift of hospitality. Italians, like many other cultures, love to throw parties, feed people, and celebrate. My father, being the Italian parent, was my greatest teacher in how to throw a party. My dad still loves inviting people over to the house for a variety of occasions and celebrations. Any reason is good enough to have someone over for, at the bare minimum, cake and coffee. Now, while I love hosting friends over at the rectory or just getting together with family and friends in general, when I was a kid, my feelings were more conflicted. You see, I loved being with whoever we had over, be it friends, family, neighbors, or anyone. I loved hosting the big holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, and even Halloween, birthdays, summer barbecues, and the like. But what I didn't enjoy was cleaning the house in preparation for everyone to come over and after they left. And my dad, for all of his many good qualities, turns into a whole other animal when it's time to clean the house. Spaces that no one will ever see or know about need to be dusted and cleaned. The floors need to be clean enough to eat off of in case anyone desired to do so. We have special china that gets used at Thanksgiving and Christmas, and they need to be as reflective as mirrors. And all the other chores continue to pile up. Bless my father's heart that he wants to make our house clean enough for Jesus himself to visit. But I am not as excessive as my father. Now don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm all for vacuuming carpets, sweeping and mopping floors, washing dishes, and being clean. I don't like living in filth as much as the next person. However, my father and I have two very different definitions of clean. He thinks our home turns into a five-star restaurant whenever we have company over. And I'm aware that no one lives their lives that clean, except maybe the president and the queen. And so people understand when they see that the ceiling fan blades have some dust on them in the middle of December. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with the gospel? You may also be thinking, he's just like my kids or my spouse. I hope you're not thinking, now I understand why he's celibate. But our gospel today has this struggle that my father and I experienced when I lived at home and we would host parties. Martha was doing all the work to prepare for Jesus by cooking, cleaning, and serving, while Mary just sat at Jesus' feet. Martha gets upset and tells Jesus to yell at Mary so that she'll help. And Jesus says to her to let her alone. Each of us is going to be either more like Martha or Mary. Some of us need to do the busy work, and some of us just want to sit and be still. This is true in our personal lives, like my father and I, but it's also true in our spiritual lives. When it comes to prayer and our spirituality, some of us are great at being active in our faith, by coming to Mass daily, praying a rosary or a novena often, doing works of mercy like feeding the hungry or visiting the sick. And some others find it nourishing to be present at Sunday Mass, sitting in the silence of their bedroom to pray, and like Mary, sit at the feet of Jesus. These are both great. Nothing is wrong or better with either one. But my brothers and sisters, this morning, I want to offer a challenge. If you're more like Mary, by coming to Mass on Sundays, sitting in your pew quietly, just looking at Jesus and being present to him, 
I challenge you to do something more. Become a lector or Eucharistic minister by contacting our rectory. Join us for daily mass once a week or more. Start praying in a group setting more often. And for those who feel more like Martha and are very active, my challenge to you is to be more contemplative. Now don't stop being a lector or Eucharistic minister or usher. We need you, and it's a beautiful ministry you offer to our parish. But instead of coming to church every Sunday and being busy, just come, sit in your pew, and sit at the feet of Jesus in prayer. You may need to go to another parish for a Sunday, not every Sunday, a Sunday, if you feel that it's a little hard or impossible to do that here, and that's okay. But sit in silence with the Lord and be with him without any distractions. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling us to discipleship. And disciples look like something. Discipleship isn't a theory or an idea that we can think about. Discipleship is a way of life. And it looks like Martha and Mary. It looks like the love we show by cleaning our homes for guests. It looks like love for Jesus and love for one another.